Good morning. Uh, today we are going to be talking about a very interesting subject of right iliac fossa mass and pain. The suggestion for this particular topic has come from one of our subscribers and I am happy to look at it. It's not exactly a straightforward topic in the sense that you are not likely to find this particular topic as an entity in any of the textbooks of surgery. You have to think, put things together. I did my best and I hope that we can, uh, I can give you an idea of what this is all about. And secondly, it is quite likely that it is impossible to cover diseases in this topic because this is a topic upon mass and the associated feature of pain because there are very few uh, masses in the right iliac fossa which totally are painless. So therefore, we will be talking both about the pain and the differential diagnosis of the mass. And we should also be looking at another aspect of the subject, namely that uh, almost 50% of the abdominal pains are localized to right iliac fossa. So keeping that in mind, a large part of treatment is undertaken by general practitioners. So therefore, we'll have a look at how the topic, uh, the subject can be handled by them as well as when they are finally referred to the surgeons, uh, which is what most of you are. Now, right iliac fossa otherwise is a very simple uh, and very small area like you can see here. Uh, it's a very small area. This is a small diagram in this that we have got here. And uh, this is the anterior superior iliac spine and this is the iliac crest. And uh, just between the two, somewhere four to five centimeters from the anterior superior iliac spine is the uh, this area roughly uh, is the area where uh, we have got the tubercle of the iliac crest. So if you draw a line from there and another you draw a line from the midpoint of the inguinal ligament, let us say it is somewhere here, uh, then you draw, draw that straight up, then you see how small the iliac fossa is, it's actually very small. So whenever we talk about uh, uh, sort of masses in the iliac fossa, think about it as a small area. Do not get confused with this area, which actually is a lumbar area. And uh, so quite often when you are describing the masses in the iliac fossa, you should keep in mind uh, and keep also looking out for the fact whether this particular mass is actually encroaching onto the lumbar area. So there should always be in your description, uh, that should be a part of your description if it is encroaching. And what are the structures in this small area? If you look at it, boundaries I think are quite clear. Uh, superiorly you have got this uh, transtubercular plane and medially you have got this midclavicular line and laterally you have got the iliac fossa. <coughs> now it is a bone covered by iliacus obviously. So what are the structures in this small area that uh, we have got here? Uh, well obviously one is, we can continue drawing this, one is obviously the cecum and the IC junction there along with the, the, you can see the diagram here, along with the appendix and then the mesentery, this is the terminal ileum, the vessels behind and the structures in front on the abdominal wall and the structures behind uh, forming the posterior relationship of these structures. So therefore, whatever lesions uh, that you will encounter are likely to be mostly from these organs. Although there are other organs which can encroach upon this particular area. Take for example, uh, an, uh, an unascended kidney, a topic kidney can lie here for example or a very large renal mass or sometimes even gallbladder can come down uh, very low down uh, into this area. I have given you some extreme examples. Although unascended kidney is not an extreme example, it has been seen quite frequently in this area. So like that, there can be other organs which can be there as visitors, you can call it. So these are the residents and the other organs will be the visitors. They will be some. So the pathologies which go with them also uh, can reflect in the iliac fossa. Uh, just an explanation, appendix, cecum, mesoappendix, terminal ileum, retroperitoneal tissues, yes, retroperitoneal tumors can also sometimes be present here. And this is something which you should keep in mind, once a while they are there, 
Now you will find nodular masses lying there and they could be coming from the iliac nodes associated with the vessels which I have shown you. Like in these areas you can have nodes and those nodes can also be felt. And of course aneurysms of these vessels can also be felt here. See in other words there are a host of pathologies which can present in the right iliac fossa and that is the reason uh, for interest in this particular region. Of course, when a case is assigned to you as a clinical entity, that time the patient will be giving you a history which refers to a particular kind of problem. So you will be obviously looking at only that problem. But since our uh, topic today is masses in the iliac fossa and of course the pain that goes with it, so therefore we should look briefly at the differential diagnosis of the various masses. And if you look at the differential diagnosis, look at this uh, interesting slide I picked up from the net. It shows that, you know, majority of these masses probably are likely to be from the appendix. Whether that is uh, appendicular abscess, appendicular mucosal or appendicular neoplasms. Appendicitis is not a mass. I hope you understand the difference. So these are the uh, things which you can see as masses. Icy cox in India is very common, the hyperplastic uh, type and chronic intersusception is something that you can see once a while here and the case also is seen once a while, it's not very common. Uh, carcinoma of the cecum and as a visitor, uh, tubo ovarian mass along with an abscess can also present here. And interestingly, something which is a uh, who is not a resident but it's actually along the path and that is the undescended testes. Instead of some, since it gets uh, stopped sometimes midway and uh, that can and it lies in the inguinal canal. So therefore undescended testes can also present here. Ectopic kidney which I have already mentioned and source abscess you must keep this in mind because it is within the experience of several of us that occasionally patients with source abscess have presented in the right iliac fossa. And last but not the least, non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. Obviously, it is a nodal pathology uh, which is presenting here. So if you look at the large panoply of conditions uh, which can present here, that will, uh, obviously when the patient presents to you, he will have pointing uh, signs and history as well. So ob you may keep in mind a large number of pathologies, but there will be a particular symptom or a sign which points to a particular pathology. <coughs> Same thing you could look at it in a different way. Look at this for example, if you look at this, this is a list which I have divided in a different way. Uh, as I told you, in relation to the structures which are normally present there, the visceral structures, you have structures in front, structures behind and of course some miscellaneous. So now I divided it like that and if you look at it that way, from the abdominal wall itself, you can have various pathologies like hematomas, abscesses, hernia, we do, we're not looking at hernia as a part of the uh, lumps presenting there. It's a separate subject, but nevertheless an incisional hernia, for example, post appendectomy and some tumors, benign tumors like lipoma, fibroma, neurofibroma or a fibromatosis and sometimes malignant tumors like desmoid tumors and soft tissue sarcomas. All these can be present in the wall. So this is the wall side of things, right? And obviously these are anterior to the viscera. And when they are present in the abdominal wall, uh, when you uh, do either a leg raising test or a head raising test, these masses are likely to become fixed and they're like, their mobility is likely to get limited and they might even become taut. Uh, so therefore, the, you have to make a distinction whether they are inside the abdomen or outside the abdomen, which is a routine with any kind of abdominal lump. So on the other hand, when you go inside, then these are the various things which I've already mentioned to you. Appendicular abscess, carcinoma colon, appendicular mass, IC tuberculosis, amoeboma, I have not mentioned earlier, amoebomas can also be here, source abscess, diverticulitis, not very common in India, but a perforated diverticulum can present as a mass, and Crohn's disease. So these are intraperitoneal. What happens retroperitoneally? Retroperitoneally, ilosuvus mass already mentioned. 
undescended testes, we talked about it. Retroperitoneal lymph nodes, again, we talked about it. And aneurysms coming from the vasculature. So this is therefore, uh, if you look at it uh, from the side, let us say, this is the wall, lesions of the wall, lesions of the viscera, and then lesions which are rising in the retroperitoneum, right? So there are three things that we have put it in, and some miscellaneous lesions. What are those miscellaneous? Not really very miscellaneous. You have to, sometimes it can be very important to keep it in mind, particularly when there is an acute presentation. For example, an ectopic, ruptured ectopic pregnancy is an acute presentation. Can show some signs in the right iliac fossa, even a mass. Otherwise, normally tubo ovarian mass can come in there. Some, rarely, some masses of uterine, uterine masses and loose bodies. <coughs> so, these are the various things that can present in the right iliac fossa if you look at it from this perspective. Instead of, uh, so therefore, it's easier to remember also abdominal wall, intraperitoneal, retroperitoneal, and miscellaneous. Now, we've seen a whole lot of pathologies uh, in the past two, three slides. But when you actually do an analysis, I found such papers, I've taken one. This is from International of Journal of Surgery by a group called Reddy et al. And this is in June 2019. They analyzed a series of 50 patients that uh, had come with RIF masses. And what did they find? They find something interesting that almost 46% of masses, that means around half, are actually related to the appendix, right, appendicular masses. And about 20% of them uh, is ileocecal cox. So look at the incidence, substantial incidence. Then uh, appendicular abscess, 16%. If you actually, maybe you can even combine these two together. So appendicular abscess, 16%. And CAC come, 12%. And psoas abscess, 6%. I told you it's not uncommon, psoas abscess. Seen 6% of cases. And most of these are encountered in the third decade of life with a male predominance. So this should give you an idea as to Despite a long list, despite a long differential diagnosis, mostly what are the subjects which are likely to be dealing with? It might surprise you, CSC come. <laughs> so I think here there is a slight issue with the paper, uh, but nevertheless, uh, this is what they found and they have put it up. So when you look at the list, uh, there are not that many conditions that you really have to keep in mind. Uh, the other conditions come in, if in case they don't belong to this group. I have seen some other papers as well of a similar analysis. Roughly, they fit into this pattern. 